Hello YouTube, I just thought I would put together a little short video here of the Eco-worthy dual axis tracking system. Now just a heads up, this is not a professional video. I don't have somebody holding the camera for me or anything else and I normally don't do this. But I just thought I'd show you a few things that I have found with this system that I disagree with some of the people that post videos about how good they are. Anyway, first, this is my one of my biggest beefs right here. Look how much these things bounce. Man, there is a lot of play in here, a lot. So much, in fact, one day, in fact, it was these two panels. These panels are uh, <clears throat> these are two 410 watts. So I got 820 watts on each one of these. Now, one day I came out. It was like 30 mile an hour wind, and this was instead of like being tilted like this is right now, it was like this, straight up and down. I'm there. What the heck is going on? So I came out, and this is one of the actuator arms right here. And if you look down at the bottom down here, you notice that there's a stainless steel bolt in there. Well, I had to put that in there for the simple reason that the pin that they gave me sheared off. It was, the one was only 30 miles an hour, and it literally sheared it right off. So I had to go. Fortunately, I had a bolt that would fit it, and I went out, and I put it on. Now, the ones that they give you, see this, this is what they give you. It's, it's, it's garbage. It, it really is not good. So, you should really go by and, repl and just re replace all of them. So, with this bouncing like this, if you read in the book, in the manual, which you will probably have to read several times, before you get the hang of programming it. It tells you that if the wind exceeds 38 and a half miles an hour, you have to remove the panels to protect the panels. You're kidding, right? I mean, anyone who's picked these things up, now these are not by, by far like the biggest panels out there, but they're not small either. These things are heavy. Now, could you see every time it gets windy coming out, and taking these things off and putting them back on again. I'm in northwestern Indiana. We had a windstorm, which is what I call them, come through, I don't know, a month and a half ago. Pine trees that were like 100 feet and taller, like snapped and snapped like twigs. There were trees down all over the place. We get frequent, strong, severe storms here where winds easily exceed 50 miles an hour. And we'll get one or, one or two of those storms a month. Could you actually see coming out and taking all these panels off and putting them back up every single time? No. So I came up with a somewhat of a solution. And I'll show you what I did. Okay, now, this is a turnbuckle right up here, right? So you can, you know, expand it, you know, or contract it. And I have one on each side. And I just put it up there just to hold it. And what I'll do is you return the panel to the flat position. And then I'll hook it on the bottom, right? And I'll, I, I do that for both sides. So with the panel in the flat position, which I call the home position, can't get this back on. There we go. Uh, and, and, you know, when it's in flat, you can lock it down pretty good. Now, I've been through about 60 mile an hour winds so far with this setup, and it's worked quite nicely. I've had no issues whatsoever with it. So, now, that's that issue. They don't provide you any, like, silicone washers or anything. So if you see right here, this is rubbing metal on metal and paint. I don't know how well you can see it because most of it's covered up right now. 
but it's rubbing all the paint off. Some of these are much worse than the others, right? It's basically just taking all the paint off in here. Duh. What is wrong with these people? Yeah, I have no idea why they would design a system like this. You know, in my opinion, this is like one of the biggest drawbacks. Okay. And the programming. Trust me, you are going to need, you're probably just better off just watching some YouTube videos because you can read the manual and you'll probably have to refer back to it multiple times. But there are 16, without entering any settings for the wind, 16 settings that you have to enter, such as TX, TY, T3. T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T11, T12, T13, V1, V2, V3. Now, when you, when you get into the ones like V1, that, that's voltage. And if you look up at the upper corner up there, that's the light sensor. So that basically senses the direction that the sunlight is coming, and it will move the panel accordingly. Well... They tell you if the voltage drops below like uh, 0.03 volts or if it's greater than T4, you have to do this or that. I don't know what the hell the voltage is on these things. There's no way that I can come out here and possibly like disconnect it and get a voltmeter you know, and, and hook it up. Not going to happen. So what do you do? You play with the settings. You constantly have to keep tweaking them all the time. To see if you can get them right now speaking of the settings i don't care what any other youtuber says now i have seven of these so i should know you cannot use the default settings there is a significant difference from one one panel to the other to the other to the other with this like a like a t10 setting right they're different they'll be off like by three or four seconds believe it or not so you absolutely cannot use the defaults, and they were way off of what the default setting was. So don't use it. Speaking of the programming, they're probably about 15 years behind the times on their, on their software. It's like using a DOS computer, seriously. You know, you know they, that is how far you know, they are behind the times. You know, nothing's automated. Everything is manual. Now, like I said, if you only have one of these and you want to, you want to slap a couple 200-watt panels on it, you know, hey, knock yourself out. But, and if you live in an area that really doesn't have any winds, yeah, they'll, it'll work for you. But if you're going to do something like I have and the area that I'm in, not a good idea to put these things in at all. Now, if you're wondering why I bought them, I didn't know what the what the uh, installer was buying. He just sent me, I'm going to put this in. And I assume he lives in this area too, that he knew what he was doing. Eh, wrong. Yeah. If you look at some of these other systems, they're rated to like 120 miles per hour. You know, you, you, you know you, they have to go flat, but you can set that up by adjusting the light sensor, you know, for clouds. You know, once it gets cloudy, it'll go flat. So, but, um, yeah. 38 and a half miles an hour, depending upon where you live, it absolutely doesn't cut it for me. Also, most of these guys, in fact, every single YouTube video that I've watched, I've never, I haven't seen anybody that's running multiple units. They're all just running one setup. Now, as you can see right now, they all look pretty close. They, they should all be pretty, uh, virtually identical. But they're, but they're not. You know, like like this one right here is a little cockeyed this way, right? Like one, three, and four look good. Two's off a little bit. You know, six is off a little bit down there. And I was happy. I was lucky because what I could do is I, I could pick a panel that looked like it was operating correctly. And with some of these variable settings. I could go in and I just copy the settings because I could do that. You know, I could see, well, this is working. So, and it actually worked quite well. It actually fixed a lot of my problems I was having. But um, 
yeah, if you only have one set, you might think that it's oriented correctly, and it's really off a few degrees here, a few degrees there. So, uh, just something to be aware of. But the uh, smaller panel on there, if you're wondering what that is, that's a little solar panel to charge the battery that runs the actuators that actually move everything, which is right there. As you can see, I still got wires I gotta clean up yet. But outside of that, I mean, would I buy this again, being in the area that I'm in and what I've seen? Absolutely not. I wouldn't, there's no way in hell I would buy these again. It, it's just, it, it's not, it doesn't really work for me in my area, you know, with my setup. If you're in an area, minimal wind, you're only throwing a couple 200 watt panels on it, sure, go ahead. But otherwise, yeah, don't bother. So, all right, I just thought I'd give you a, a couple uh, a couple things to think about, you know, if you're thinking about buying, uh, buying this setup. Okay, catch you later.